Okay, we're here with Adam Arroyo, um, whose dog, um, Cindy, was executed by Buffalo, New York police officers on Monday, uh, June 4th. Um, can you tell us a little bit, Adam, um, again, about what you found when you returned here to your apartment? Yeah, the first thing I, when I walked up the stairs, I saw uh, my door was just completely destroyed. Um, I walked in the house, everything was tossed up. I mean, everything was everywhere, dog food on the floor. I mean, food everywhere. Um, you know, all my important papers were all flipped up. Um, I came in, I was looking for my dog. Um, I didn't know where she was. And then as soon as I came to where she always lays here, um, that's when I saw all the blood on the wall. I saw all the gunshots, um, and it was just—it was a horrific, horrific thing. And uh, I just hope this never happens to anybody else. Can you describe? Uh, I know it's hard, but can you describe what you saw when you—you know—the first moment you saw Cindy? Yeah, I saw her uh, when she was at the animal shelter on 380 Oak Street. Um, I went over there to identify the body and. Uh, Man, she was just cold. Um, you know, they had her in the freezer, and it just, all, all I could do was cry, you know what I mean? Because that was my, like I said, you know, that's my baby, you know, that was my little girl. I mean, people who don't have a dog, they don't understand this, but that was, that she was a part of me. I had her since she was a baby. You know, when she was sick, I was there, and I took care of her, and uh, it was just crazy just to see all the, the, the bullet holes in her and, and the blood, and I mean, it was just, it was, it was just, it was wild. It was crazy. So Adam, they they removed her from here when they killed her. Yeah, um, when I got here, she wasn't even here. They took her straight to the animal shelter. I didn't even get to see her. Last time I saw her is when uh, I chained her up. I told her, "Bye, baby." I always rub her face, and I say, "I always, you know, tell her I'll see you later." And uh, and I, I'll never get to see her again. Now, Adam, one thing that's interesting to me when uh, when I first. Uh, learned of the story um you have an interesting background which actually is military and also you are looking into getting into the law enforcement field yeah. specifically i believe uh, a corrections officer that's correct can you tell us a little bit about your military career and your plans yeah, definitely. I um I came in uh, in U.S. Army in 2005. Um, I was uh did my basic training in AIT in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Um, when I graduated from there, I got stationed in Fort Hood, Texas, where I uh, started all my training there with uh, Second Squadron, Third Armored Cavalry Regiment, uh, normally uh, called uh, Two Three ACR. Um, from there, we did 15 months of training, and uh, I got deployed in Iraq and Mosul and down south to uh, Diyala province for 15 months. Um, you know, it was crazy out there, you know, getting shot at every day. Um, you know, IEDs, I had two of my buddies that were killed out there. And, um, you know, it was just, you know, it was so real. And I made it home alive without a scratch. And, um, you know, I'm thankful you know, for God for that. And... Uh, and when I got out of the Army in 2010, I moved here to Buffalo to start a new life. And what are your plans now? You were telling me earlier about entering the uh, law enforcement field as uh, in corrections. Is that is that right? That's correction, yes. Um, I took the test April 13th. Um, usually it takes, they say, anywhere from uh, 60 to 90 days for the test results back. But I did get a paper stating that they did accept my veteran points, which is like five extra points. And um, I hope to pursue a career in, uh, you know, in law enforcement. That's that's what I like to do. I like to keep people safe. Well, with that, I mean, it's it's uh, it's interesting you say that because <laughs> having having had your dog executed by Buffalo, New York police officers who entered a wrong apartment uh, with a search warrant executing a, a search warrant in, in, in the wrong apartment. Um, how does it make you feel, not only just as a citizen, uh, you know, with, with police, it's our understanding that police are here to obviously uphold the law and serve and protect us, mm -hmm. 
but even more so someone who has the military background, who is looking to get into law enforcement. How do you feel about that personally? I mean, I, I just feel very violated. I mean, when we was in Iraq, you know, we did surveillance. We did, you know, the reconnaissance and to know where these targets were going to be at specifically, you know, who was in the house, you know, I mean, everything. And uh, I just feel like they didn't do their homework. Um, they know this is a drug block and uh, they ran in the wrong house. I mean, I know mistakes happen, but this is... I mean, there's no words for this. There's no excuse why, you know. And then on top of that, you got people outside telling them, yo, you in the wrong house, you in the wrong house. And they telling people to shut the F up, get on the ground. They handcuffing people, and they're not even listening to the community. You know, they don't care. They're, 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 they got, you know, a one-track mind, and they just they don't care about what's going on in the community. They really don't. Have they, uh, has anyone, Adam, from the city of Buffalo, uh, Mayor Brown's office, uh, Buffalo, New York police, the commissioner, any officials whatsoever, any officials, have they apologized for this? No, they haven't. Um, I had two uh, Buffalo lieutenants that did come to my house um, just to set up a meeting so I can talk to them, um, which I definitely want a lawyer present um, before I do that. And I'm still in the process of searching for a lawyer, but no one has uh, apologized to me. Um, nothing, um, you know, it, is, it just, it is what it is, you know. Can you tell us a little bit, I know we talked earlier, um, you said your concern is also, um, that there needs to be some change, right? In policies, Definitely. some, some Definitely. change in the way police, I know in Rochester, um, you know, I've covered way too many of these stories. It just seems like police, uh, don't even think twice before, shooting and killing and killing an innocent uh family pet you know innocent animal um a best friend in this case i mean um what what are, what would you like to see happen i want to see these policies getting changed you know and, and have the police working with the spca to come in you know use non-lethal force maybe have animal control outside and come remove these dogs before they finish their raid there's no need to to murder I, i'm not even gonna say kill murder my dog and, um, you know, like I said, I, I want to get with the SPCA, animal rights, all, any type of activist. And we need to get behind this and we need to make a change, you know, and, and change these procedures. Just, just so, you know, this heartache doesn't happen to anyone else again. And if they do, they held liable for their actions. That's what I want. I want justice. Thank you, Adam. And, and I'm sorry for what you're going through and uh, for the loss of your... Uh your beautiful dog, Cindy, and um, thank you for uh, sharing your story. All right, thank you.